This is a lesson on electric potential of point charges in electrostatics. In another lesson, I cover the electric potential due to a constant electric field. But in this situation, I want to focus on those of a point charge. I had covered the concept of the electric potential in a prior lesson. And we know that the electric field is related to the potential. Well, we know the electric field of a point charge that was covered in a prior lesson, the electric field of a point charge, and that's the equation. Uh, you can plug that in if you know calculus. You can do the calculus on this, but I will give you the answer when you do the calculus on this. V equals kq over r. That's the electric potential of a point charge. This is a potential, a distance away from the charge, at a radius r. So you can see, again, this is um, 10 volts, this is 15 volts, this is 20 volts. As we move away from a point charge, the value of the potential decreases, and that potential depends on the distance. It depends on also the value of that charge. A larger charge will have a larger potential. A larger negative charge will have a larger negative potential, and this graph would actually look like this for a negative charge rather than pointing upward for a positive charge. Uh, it's pretty explanatory in here. Uh, Ke is 8.99 times 10 to the 9th with those units. That's the electric constant. Q is the charge you will actually want to plug in the sign here. And I have that down here. The potential, again, is a scalar quantity. It has a value with no direction. It's not like electric field or electric force. It's just a value. So when you have a sign, the sign of that comes from a positive charge or a negative charge. So you will actually want to put the sign of the charge in when you, put it in, when you evaluate Q in the equation. A positive charge then will result in a positive potential, and a negative charge results in a negative potential. So I picked out just a quick example here of an equipotential surface, and we saw this in and we saw this in the concept for electric potential. An equipotential surface that surrounds a point charge Q. So we have some point charge Q in here uh, is 490 volts. So we can get rid of these values in here. We just have one in here that is 490 volts. This whole surface, all along this whole surface, and remember this is a sphere. Um, a point charge is 3D, so we have a sphere going on. Uh, and it says an area of 1.1 meters squared. So the area, the surface area of that sphere is 1.1. So I can write that down. The surface area of the sphere equals 1.1 meters squared. Determine Q. Well, if I solve for Q in the equation, if I put Q in here and I solve for Q, I'll move R over to the other side and get KE in the denominator. So I get V times R divided by KE. I know the voltage. I know the constant. I need to solve for R. But they give me the surface area. The surface area of a sphere is represented by 4 pi R squared. And I know that equals 1.1 meters squared. So I can solve for R in that situation. R equals 1.1 divided by 4 pi. And I can take the square root of that. And that gives us a radius of 0 0.3 approximately. I held some sig figs because I'm going to plug that in over here where R is. So now I can solve for the charge. The voltage is 490. R is 0 0.2959 and the electric constant is 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. And you can do units on here if you like, but I'm pretty confident that this is fine. And when you run this through your calculator, you will get that the charge is 1.6126 times 10 to the negative 8th. Coulombs. So that's the units of charges, coulombs. And just to get you used to converting be, between powers and the prefixes for the powers of 10, uh, I have to the negative 8th power. If I move this over 1, I will get to the negative 9th power, and I can represent this as 16.1 nanocoulombs. And that would be a perfectly fine answer for this problem. So that's a straightforward application of the potential of a point charge. 
Often with this material, they will ask you to calculate a net electric potential. And again, I will remind you that electric potential is a scalar quantity. The sign is independent of any coordinate system and you don't need to decompose it. It's just a number. So we're going to use the sign of the charge to determine the sign of the voltage. When we're finding net electric potential, the strategy here is going to be to find the potential due to the many charges at a single point and simply add those together. We're going to find the potential of one charge, the potential of another charge. We just run it KQ over R, find all of those values, and then just simply add them together. The example I picked out in order to exemplify this is a four charge configuration. And we're going to see this again in another problem that I do in a couple of lessons. So um, no, it's some familiarity. I'm going to label these charges. I will call them A, B, C, and D. Okay. It says the drawing shows four point charges. The value of Q, and each of them has, uh, these are positive Qs and these are negative Qs. Q is six. 0.25 microcoulombs, so that's 10 to the negative 6. And the distance between them, this distance D, is 0.75, so there's that much here. So when we think about distances to the point that we're looking at, it says find the total potential at point P. Mm, I guess that's part A. Find the potential at, find the total potential at the location P. Assume that the potential of the point charge of is 0 at infinity. So we can just use this equation as it is. R will be the distance away from the charge that we're looking at. So when I look at the net potential, and like it said on the previous side, um, we're going to take the potential of A and add on the potential of B and add on the potential of C and add on the potential of D. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put in expressions for each one of these, these terms. So the potential at A is KQA over RA to this point P, so we're going to see that we're going to have 2D for A, and that'll be my next step. I'll have a next step here, but I'm just putting in here what I know, QB over RB plus QC over RC plus QD over RD. So let's put in what we know in terms of D and the Q. For A, we have KQ over 2D, and this will be a positive value. I'll note that's positive. For B, we also have a positive charge. We have KQ, and its distance from this point P is only at 1D. There's a D in here. Let me call that a D as well. For point, for point charge C, it has a negative charge, so I'm going to put minus KQ over and it has a distance d from point p and then also d is in the same situation k q over d i'm going to notice that these two terms are equal and opposite of one another uh, so i'm left with two terms i have k q over 2d minus k q over d i'm going to factor out a k q over d and in the first term, it leaves a 1 half, and in the last term, it leaves a minus 1. So I know the net potential is going to be negative kq over 2d. When I subtract, it's going to be a negative number, a negative 1 half, and I'll multiply it by that. So that's how I would find that value, and I can plug numbers in here. Uh, k is 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. They tell me that q is 6.25 times 10 to the negative sixth. And then D is also a value that's given 0.75 up here. So I'll go two times 0.75 and I won't forget my negative sign. So when I look at the net voltage at point P, and you can put that in here, the net voltage at point P is 37,458 volts with a negative sign, it's a negative value, or you could say that's negative 37.5 kilovolts. And that's how you would find the net electric potential due to a charge configuration at a single point. If I move to another point, let's call this point Q, all of these charges would have a different radius. I would have to figure out what those radii are and then add the potentials up again, but that's how you would solve that problem.